Good evening and thank you for joining us. We're going to begin tonight with breaking news. Millions of Americans in the South are heading into another night of freezing temperatures without clean water or enough to eat. At food banks and water distribution sites, lines now stretch as long as a mile. Tonight, President Biden says he'll sign a new emergency declaration for the state of Texas, where half of the state is still under a boil water notice. Millions more in Louisiana and Mississippi are facing the same crisis tonight. And things are so bad in San Antonio, Texas, firefighters there struggled to get water from the hydrants to fight off an enormous blaze. Thousands of homes have been destroyed by pipes, which have burst, and families are now worried how they're going to pay for the big cleanup. The economic toll from the storms could reach as high as $50 billion. The human toll, well, it's already being felt. At least 44 people have been killed by this week's winter storms. Some of those people froze to death in their own homes when the power went out. And tonight, all that wicked weather has also delayed the shipment of 6 million doses of coronavirus vaccines, forcing appointments to be canceled at thousands of vaccination sites across the country. We've got a lot of new reporting for you on a very busy Friday night. Our team of correspondents is standing by. CBS's Janet Shamlian is going to lead off our coverage from Houston, where temperatures are expected to plummet again tonight. Good evening, Janet. Nora, there's a critical search across Texas for water tonight. Community groups are collecting it. They're bringing it to centers like this, and then they are shuttling it out to people who need it. How dire is it? Well, the county judge called it a man-made disaster that has cut lives short. Andrew Rudnick has called at least 100 plumbers to repair his burst pipes. He always hears the same thing. Six weeks. The Houston dad and his wife, Megan, have a six-month-old daughter, Reese. And they're desperate for help. What's it like having a six-month-old and no water in your house for days on end? It's scary to have to ask a neighbor to use their outdoor hose to fill a pot so that you can boil water for your baby's bottles. Yeah. They're also worried about mold growing and may have to tear down the walls themselves. It's definitely overwhelming. Uh, we we're just talking about where we're going to stay tonight. The power is back, but half the state's population, more than 14 million, still don't have drinkable water. This is a drive through site in Houston for people who don't have water. There are hundreds of cars in line here right now. By the end of the day, they will have given out thousands of cases of water. Water shortages impacting first responders, too. Firefighters in San Antonio battling low pressure and frozen hydrants. It's just these hydrants were, were frozen and there's no, we couldn't get water. We have to go quite a distance to get water. With many grocery shelves bare, food banks are seeing a spike in demand. In the Dallas area this weekend, they're preparing to give out 25,000 meal kits. We definitely anticipate there's going to be a surge uh, in the need for emergency food. Beyond Texas, taps are dry in parts of Louisiana and Mississippi as crews race to thaw frozen water mains. The storm stopped millions in their tracks. Oh, my God. Good. But not Jenny Passman's baby. She had to give birth in her living room. No power or running water, but a new baby boy. Six on the dot. Clyde Passman. You did it. The best kind of delivery. Here in Houston, as volunteers are working around the clock, officials are saying it could be next week before that boil water order is lifted. Nora, that is a long time to wait. A long time. Can't imagine delivering a baby in the living room. Janet Chamlian, thank you.